All right, guys, so the time has come. Uh, I have hit 8,000 subs. Thank you guys so much on YouTube. And as I promised, the most requested video, which is about what is going on all over my body with this ink, I am going to explain to you in the best ability I can. So I'm gonna try and answer the most questions I've been asked over the last few months on Instagram, the last like half year. I'll try and answer all of them and try and you know, clear your thoughts on why I have this, what I have and how I've done it and everything. I'll try and answer most of them. So I'm gonna start from the ground up for my ink. So I have one side of my right leg tattooed up to my knee. So a lot of it is actually filler up my leg. So a lot of the things with not having like a sticker sleeve or uh, like an old traditional pieces, like you see a lot of that bold ink, bold lining and it kind of look like stickers spotted. I liked having mine completely like fluent and continuous and connected. So you needed filler pieces, which is really cool. So we used a lot of sacred geometry, a lot of black ink, and just to kind of join it together, you know, make it flow, make it nice. So that's when people ask how many pieces you have. I can't really decipher which pieces, like you can't really, you know, pick apart like this from this. You can, I guess, say that, but it's hard when it comes down to line work. So I have two pieces, I guess. So what would be my sweater up to my head and what I have on my leg so far. So I have a lot of filler and sacred geometry on my leg, custom pieces from my tattoo artist, Steph. So I have four artists now, or five artists have worked on my body. Pretty sure I might have to correct that later. But two have worked on my leg so far, and Steph is my main artist uh, back home at Sudbury, in Sudbury. So Steph, my main artist for, you know, most of my torso, my back, my head, and most of my leg here. She's an absolute gem. We had this, you know, synchronization. She's like a sister to me. And basically some of the days I'd walk in and I wouldn't even know what I was getting. And we'd just piece it together, make it custom and it would fit and it would just click, right? So that's kind of what happened with the leg. She came in, pieced it together. We had it done in Toronto. So I have a lot of sacred geometry. That's her main thing. She's, she loves it. She's very spiritual. And uh, it looks absolutely amazing. She has done a couple of mandalas on the back of my leg and she needs to actually darken the, it was a lot of stippling. So there's like zip, 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 like dot work. She needs to darken that up. And uh, she put the she put the mandalas on the back of my head. So there's one actually in the back of my head with a few connecting other ones. The thing about a mandala in sacred geometry is it, it represents like um, perfection and like continuous flow. And like if it's measured, like it's almost eternity, right? If it's measured from any point to another point, it is the same measurement from any point in the mandala, which is really cool. So it's like really, really, it's about unity and it's just perfection. It's a really cool piece. It's really some deep meaning behind it. And uh, then just up the leg here, I have actually no, I have another mandala on my knee, a big one. So this one's really cool. She's like a flower one. Super, super nice. Really thick line work. The line work actually hurt. Uh, it, my line work hurts worse than shading, guys. So line work is worse than shading. Uh, just below that, in a really awkward shin spot, um, Chris Price, who is actually going to finish my leg up my thigh, and I'm going to take you guys with me on that journey. Uh, in actually two days, we're going to start up on thigh. But he did a 3D piece here, which is, is so cool, and it turned out it turned out really really nice. So when I look at it this way, it looks like I'm looking at the block standing up here, and if you look at it head on, I think it's the opposite way, which is super cool. So that is it for the leg right now, and there's actually a little mandal on the back of my leg. I actually totally forgot that was there, but yeah. That is there, this is half the leg right now, and we need to finish it, and my legs are super hairy too. All right, so I'm gonna move up the body to my torso piece. This was definitely, I'd say, this whole area is the most painful, other than my head, but realistically what people would get on their body every day. This is the most painful spot, like the ribs, the stomach, it was crazy, the sternum is wild. So I'm gonna talk about the pieces that actually I can talk about that have, you know, like some specific meaning. And so there are some more, it's a really cool, um, you know, the, these two skulls, we made this stomach piece really symmetrical. I had a piece already here, so this was kind of what we had to do. Uh, this skull, I have on my left side of my ribs is like a really like anatomically correct skull. It's beautiful. This was done by Joel Marin back home in Sudbury. Great, great artist. We had a bit of a falling out, but he prepped this piece. It was actually supposed to be a skull spitting out the universe. And if you look really closely, you can still see the line work kind of from the cloud coming from the skull. And it was supposed to be the universe all black across my stomach. I'm obsessed with astronomy and uh, physics. It's just, that's a little thing about me. I absolutely love it. Since my dad gave me Carl Sagan's Cosmos, I just, I fell in love, right? And I really wanted some space pieces. But we had a falling out and uh, Steph had to fill in my stomach over this line work that was there, which was tough. So we figured a bunch of sacred geometry, the two flowers of life that are really prominent. I absolutely love that. So the flower of life in sacred geometry, it's like, it's got a really, really, really deep meaning when it comes to like ancient religions and stuff, but I'm not the most religious. But I love that the whole meaning, to sum it up, basically represents and depicts space and time itself. 
and it's got tons of explanations behind it. Just look it up, it's really cool. And the piece is actually amazing. Like just the actual design of it is so, so, so cool as a filler. Love this design. Two skulls here, and then we go up into a ram's head. That she actually had some white ink, but we have to get the white ink out again. There's a ram's head just below a death moth here, uh, and then a few roses. I have a lot of roses here. This is basically a full custom piece. I walked in that day, and she had this piece laid out from the top of the ram's horn all the way down to this uh, moon and we just had at her. So we had half my stomach done at one point and half this. It's a really cool cover up piece and uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. So stomach piece is phenomenal. It makes me try and keep in really good shape so I can still show this core, try it. One of my favorite pieces, uh, best done, is on my right side of my ribs here. Joel did this again, so he did both pieces on my ribs. Uh, this is a girl, uh, I don't know if I came across the photo, I think it was on Pinterest, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I was I was like, no, there's no way. Can you tattoo this girl? I wasn't with anybody at the time, clearly, and I wasn't with Anne. Anne's not the biggest fan of this, but I just say it's her with tattoos. But I got him to, he took the challenge, right? And he did it very well. Like, the piece still blows my mind. It's about a 14 hour piece or so total. Absolutely killer on the ribs. It's tough, the ribs suck guys. Especially when you get into the bones here. Um, what else, what else have we got? I got a big, big mandala under my armpit here. Half of a mandala, super, super cool. Lots of really thick ink. I love that design. She did different, and the things with mandalas is that you can make them so custom, you can make them your own, which is really awesome, and they all have the same kind of similar meaning of eternity. And, perfection and unity. So she did it with like stippling inside of it and like tons of dark ink, it was awesome. And the sternum, moving up the sternum, I have another mandala in the middle of my chest here. So this is kind of to fill this area. This really, really sucked. Now I'm gonna move up to the chest. Um, the more of the story pieces are on like my arms and whatnot. So the chest, uh, this is a funny one. This is a really cool filler piece. It's kind of like another sacred geometry square. We had to fill a lot of awkward spots. So I had certain pieces before other pieces and we had to fill that in. And sacred geometry is an amazing filler. So we have this cupcake here that is just a cupcake and it has a heart on the icing so I was at a, actually a Harley Davidson in Sudbury Steph had a open call for you could walk it basically they're having a, a big contest and stuff at this Harley Davidson shop and I went in and got tatted in front of everybody it was really cool it was a little fun little experience but I got this tattoo so it's kind of like an old school sailor tat it's a heart on top of this cupcake it says sweetheart and a banner. It's supposed to be like a pun. I love it. I still love it. But it's funny. Um, I, it's a great piece. I still love it. It looks like a little bow tie, so it's kind of cool. So that's for this side. This side is a custom piece. This is actually the, one of the first ones I got on my front of my body, front of my torso. This chest piece was done. Uh, Steph just made this custom piece, kind of just drew it up completely scratch. This girl like spitting out the universe and she's spitting out, you know, like there's like Saturn, there's like tentacles coming out from her hair, kind of like has like a Medusa vibe to it. And she's all like a bit of colors like on her lips and whatnot. There's a meteor coming under through my nip and uh, a few galaxies up here, which is really cool, spiral galaxies. So I, that really hit goes to home because I, have to, I love space. And it's a really just nice to have a custom piece on you. Work with your artists, guys. If you have any questions about like what pieces you need to get, the best advice I can ever give you is to work with your artists that you choose, right? Look at their pieces, see what their vibe is. If it kind of floats like what your idea is, run it by them and let them take charge because if their comfort level is high with the piece, the piece is gonna turn out amazing. So so that's one of the best things is to work with your artist. Don't just come in and be like, I'm getting this exactly like this, like that. Then it will look like that and it won't look like anything different that you were expecting, right? It'll look very basic. So the best advice I can do, I just clicked. Sometimes I didn't even know what I was getting when I walked in. We have an awkward spot to fill. Like for instance here, I had these knives on my traps. It was a really awkward spot because I had the sleeve, my chest done, and my back started on the top coming down from my neck and we had this weird trap spot. So she drew up these knives with this reflection of a skull in the three knives and it was so cool and it fit perfect. I was like, let's do it. Like that was that was it, right? And that's, how, that's relationship I had. I was in every single Wednesday for a year straight getting tatted on my whole torso, getting my sweater done. So that was really cool. It's a lot of ink, a lot of pain, but I love it. All right. So we'll go to the, we'll just flip to the back and then I'll talk about my arms. So the back is actually, I don't, there's not much really to talk about here other than it's a massive custom piece. We kind of pieced together. We planned it out. We started from the skull. No, we started from, no, yeah. Where did we start? Started from the mid neck down and then it was like halfway done my back and I decided to go in and get my whole head tattooed. So that was, that was pretty crazy. And she was all for it. She was like, yeah, it's like, that's the next step. Cause I'm not touching my neck and my face. My mom won't talk to me again, but she, she wasn't a fan of me getting my head tattooed either. She cried a little, it wasn't too good. But I mean, the thing is you can grow your hair in, which is cool as I'm growing hair right now. I can't really show you, but I'm going to put a picture up for you. I absolutely, I'm obsessed. So I'm obsessed with space and I'm obsessed with horror. I absolutely love horror. Like that's my, I, I love it. I get off on that shit. I would. I'm just, I'm just totally kidding. 
I'm not gonna get off on that, guys. But I love horror. That's just my little niche for movies and just everything. I grew up with it, watching it with my sisters, my family, and just it gives it gets the blood flowing. It's nice. So we got um, the back of my head with the mandala. We put some more sacred geometry up the back of my neck and up towards my skull, and then on the sides of my head. The one side, uh, this was just I think it was something I saw on Pinterest. Actually, it was a super cool horror picture of like a nun with like bleeding eyes, and it was a really really dope one that I just I was obsessed with them. I really wanted to get this piece, and I ended up fitting the side of my head perfectly of all spots like just over my ear so she tied that and then i said like next week screw it let's do the other side of my head so we did the other side of my head with i think one of my favorites easy in the top five um the evil dead girl so if you were to watch the new remake of evil dead which is like hands down my favorite horror movie right now it was i was like we'll show you the clip So I got that on the side of my head with the girl cutting her own face off. That's just enough said. I absolutely love it. It fit in perfect. Even with the yellow eye, it really pops when my head's actually shaved. But uh, I'm growing my hair out right now. It's cold in Canada, so don't want to shiver. Down my back is a fully custom piece. Kind of, it's, it's just, there's not much to explain. It's, it's just, we put this together over time while we were tied in the front and killed it. So we have like this bunny with her eyes. Like she's being puppeteered. So we still have to add the strings actually on the back. That's the one last thing I have to add. She's being puppeteered by these two hands. And uh, there's like nests of grenades she's sitting on. And below that, I was always obsessed with another horror thing. The four, There's four Disney princesses. It's kind of like an Alice in Wonderland theme in the middle. And then there's the four horror Disney princesses that we kind of like blended in lightly. And it was like Cinderella, but it's like the horror version. So it's Cinderella's like getting her, she has like a glass shoe shoved, her, shoved in her throat. And then uh, Beauty and the Beast. So there's, what's her name? Belle. So you have Belle from Beauty and the Beast, um, Little Mermaid, uh, which is just, she's all torn up and zombified. And who's the last one? Yeah, Sleeping Beauty. So the zombie versions of all of them. Below that, they're kind of just like sitting on an anchor. So that's my tramp stamp, is that little anchor. So that's as far as that goes down the back. There's a lot of filler on the side. So we're going to the sleeves now. The sleeves have more of a story. This was my actual first sleeve. I had this arm done uh, for a long time, four years now. And, no, three years. But I had it down to my wrist here. Never had my hands done. It was a whole 300 sleeve, so this came from my first tattoos ever, which were the calligraphy down both triceps. This side is covered now. This side says Molon Lave, it's Greek for come and get them or come and take them. Uh, it's on the United States statue in Greece, and it is basically like, if you watch the movie 300, which I think everybody's seen, best scene where the Persians just yelling out, you know, Spartans drop your weapons, and he says come and take them. Spartans, lay down your weapons. Um, so I absolutely love that part and that is his thing like come and get them if you want it come and get it So I got a whole 300 sleep based on it And this was from another artist Dale at Prick Tattoos. He was my first and he <laughs> tatted absolutely amazing Like the Queen of Sparta, King Leonidas and then there's a scene where Spartans fighting the Persian here And we have all that like brick crumble we have a Spartan spear and the shield and then we have a wicked Xerxes piece here like a portrait so killer and then that dove into this bleeding zombie girl Joel did so he did my two rib pieces in this another artist uh, Adam at Black Apple did my fingers my two fingers pieces so I had my hands done and then I had my fingers open then I drug that down my fingers the blood drug it down and the purple here and they were the purple didn't stay this had to be done twice red actually stayed one sitting and um, and to finish off this this is actually blood so a big question I get from a lot of people is that a birthmark no this is blood it's supposed to be tattooed I should tattoo around so you don't think it's like a weird avoided spot of a birthmark it is uh, all over here so there's the red here red here red here here it is not a birthmark it's like blood splatter 300 blood goes hand in hand right so that's what we did so lastly this side of the arm my hand has like five artists on it I think we have Adam at Black Apple for my fingers uh, Sean Paul did this in uh, Gaelic so I'm Irish my background so this is Gaelic it says father in Gaelic and then um, moved up to this I'm a big-time metalhead if you guys didn't know I love my metal and I am actually a drummer I've been drumming for about 14 15 years I haven't touched a drum kit in a while though but it's like riding a bike I guess and I put structures wicked metal band album cover divided by on my hand and then colored it in Dale colored it in from pricks and he oh no <laughs> Joel colored it in Dale did the outline Steph put 
this tattoo in. I'll talk about that one. That's my most important piece. I'll talk about that one after. And um, Adam colored it in and Sean Paul did this on my finger. There's a lot of different artists on my hand. So moving up, I have uh, these lips, Joel did, biting a cherry. This is a filler piece, another again filler piece that he had this, you know, sketch drawn up and we agreed and we fit it in and it ended up fitting perfect, looked badass. We did it. This super cool vampire piece that Joel did on my forearm here. The, I just look at the piece, right? It was like a seven hour piece, the color, it was just so cool. He's really color based, if you haven't noticed. All the rest are black and gray. I like that like little bit of color to pop, but I do love black and gray total for my tattoos. I'm going up the arm is just to basically, Steph put a lot of filler pieces in, the rose mantle on the back, a skull with a dagger in it. This piece is actually really funny on my forearm here. It is an old, my only old school traditional American flash piece, which is, uh, it was a walk-in. So we were in Pittsburgh, me and my family, my mom and dad. I think my mom had two tattoos at this point. My dad did, had none. We're in Pittsburgh wasted out of our trees and then um down east carson street which is like the most bars per capita in the usa absolute shit show walking down the street my mom goes let's get a tattoo all right and we walked in and i'm covered already right well somewhat and my dad's there too and he's like oh let's do it so i i was blown away my heart was pumping i'm like let's my god my dad's gonna get a tattoo mr no tattoos getting a tattoo so they got matching Steelers tattoos Steeler nation baby they got matching Steelers tattoos here i wasn't a big enough fan yet to get ones so i didn't feel like i deserved it so they got matching pieces my mom got the um red coloring for breast cancer red and pink and my dad got the normal piece hilarious and then i was last up and i got this old school sailor jerry's piece of an ass diving into my skin I thought it was awesome. So I got that, that's a good memory. And, um, but yeah, they actually left me while I was getting a tattoo to go to the bar next door and make friends. And I ended up finding them after, but it was a great time. Moved up here, uh, this is a really cool kind of Day of the Dead. Oh, Day of the Dead, really like heavy line work on it. Really like that piece. Steph actually finished it. Totally, just like a classic piece, really cool. I, I really like this one. And I find the line work and the roses really pop. I really love it. Inside is a gun. I have to get it actually redone because it's fading a bit, but it's a gun on my gun. It's totally not meant for that, but we decided it after. That's what the meaning is gonna be. Old school revolver with just like cool, you know, rippling and kind of effects on it and uh, smoke. I don't know, I really liked it. The banners and the whole design and stuff. It was really cool. That was another piece that she drew up and we did it together. So we kind of planned this. Just when I was getting those bolt head, like back-to-back so -back tattoos. Then I had my first tattoo here, which I was explaining about. It said Vini Vidi Vici in calligraphy. And that was what I got with this one. So I had two tricep pieces. I like roll back my sleeves up to go to parties and stuff. Like I got a fresh. Tat. I thought it was the coolest, coolest like dude ever. Like I actually rolled up the back of my sleeves at a party after I got them. <laughs> Those days. And I, it was like years, a couple years later, I was like getting this sleeve started, and I, like, it was like the f fifth girl to come up to me. I was bartending at the keg at the time, and it was like this girl to come up to me, and she's like, "Oh my God, does that say Vini Vidi Vici?" And I was like. Oh. Why? One more time. I was waiting on it one more time. It's like, oh my God, I was gonna get that. I'm getting that. So I just looked at her and I was like, totally get it. Get it, because it's getting covered tomorrow. And I went and saw staff the next day and covered it. So she had a wicked piece drawn up. Covered that tattoo, because like four guys in the city got it after, and like every girl and their mother wanted Vini Vini Vici. I came, I saw I conquered, and I fucking covered that shit. So staff covered it. Really cool dark piece of like a snake coming around apples. Awesome. I absolutely love that. So I let her do a lot of free reign. Like we had a lot of, you know, connections for these tattoos. Super cool. So I'm gonna say the two most important pieces for last. Uh, there's actually a few, so there's this rose and there's a lock on the back of my arm, or back of my shoulder. Those are the last two spots I had to fill on my upper body and actually Andrea kind of snagged them. So the white rose is actually really white. She, I, the day when I met her, I bought her roses and I said I'd never let the rose, the last rose die. You know, like that's when we'd end kind of deal. If I let the last rose die, my mistake, because we're still together and I'm still buying roses every week to replace them. It's a little pricey, but it was a worthy investment and it was a really cool tattoo. So I technically will never have a rose die because I have it on me, but that was the first one. And then I actually got Andrea. She's a model, right? She can't have any tattoos and her parents would kill her and then me, but we had a kind of lock and key agreement where I got the Tiffany lock that says Anne tattooed on the back of my shoulder and I actually had to get her a Tiffany key. <laughs> plan to get jewelry and that was our little agreement right so those are the last two spots in my body and for the final piece uh, the most important piece on my body I'd say the most that has the most meaning to me is uh, this little thing on my thumb here 
this little Superman logo, as you can see, and it says Keto. So my best friend who I was living with for a while in London, Ontario, actually, he passed away two years ago now, and it was really too sudden. So that's why I was actually living with him at the time, and um, I was actually back in Sudbury catering to my other buddy's dad passing away, helping him out and go to that funeral. And at that time, Keith actually died. So he went on a boat cruise in Toronto, on the Mariposa Cruises, and fell off the party boat with like 400 people on it. And it was a malpractice by the boat company. They kept going for about a nautical mile before everybody saw him. They just kept going. And the water was about maybe eight degrees. So 10 minutes in there, hypothermia kicks in, you're not swimming anymore. So he just disappeared after say like 10, 12 minutes, fell under, they didn't find him until July 1st, the day before my birthday. And that's when he, yeah, that's when he was pronounced dead. So he was basically, when I, li I lived with him, I, the guy was amazing to me, he showed me everything now like basically where I'm at and why I'm here is a lot of his inspiration and who he was to me he took me in like a brother yeah so he was basically Superman to everyone and it's even cool is uh gravestone is actually a huge Superman logo with the massive so cool but he was Superman to everybody like I've never met such an infectious human being when it came to humility and happiness and, and laughter and just it's like such a motivating dude but yeah that's I'd say that has the most uh, meaning to me for a tattoo all right, so I'm gonna answer a lot of the questions that I get on Instagram and all of you guys steadily messaging me, so I'm gonna put these to rest for ya. So my first tattoo, explain it to you, my uh, two uh, pieces of calligraphy down my triceps. First tattoo, how many artists? Sean Paul, Steph. Six artists total my body. Six total have touched my body with ink. How far do they go down? So to put that to rest, guys, right here, that's how far they go down. That's it. And that is a question that I get a lot. But um, my love for black and gray, for black and gray, it's just, it's completely, yeah, it's your own choice, it's your own decision on what you like, and you basically either fall in love with color, or both, whatever, I kind of love both, and uh, I just fit black and gray with my body, I really liked it, and it was just fit for me, it's my choice, right, so it's all completely up to you, don't follow anybody else's choices, make your choice, do I regret any of my pieces, none. Cover up pieces, I uh, explained to you, I have the one cover up under here, yeah, the sense look on my stomach, that is another cover up. Will I tattoo my neck or my face? No, I'm not going to, nothing against it. I love like killer neck pieces, but I just, I promised me people I wouldn't and I just want to keep it kind of like this for now. I already did my hands in the back of my neck and stuff, but I'm just going to keep it open right now, but I will never do my face. I don't know, just my opinion again, right? It's what I want for myself, but there's some of them are badass. I love it. Uh, my next tattoo is going to finish this leg sleeve on my thigh. So I'll take you guys on the journey with me for that. It's gonna be really exciting. How many hours total? So hours total, I <laughs> don't know where I'm at, but like I was in every Wednesday for a year. So counting cover-ups, counting touch-ups, counting everything, I have to be like 400, 500 hours. Like I have to be around there. Cause like just doing the math, like I was every Wednesday for a year, just that year, I was with it for a minimum of three hours, right? Three, four out of five hours. It's yeah, it's a lot of hours in the chair but all worth it most painful tattoos definitely okay the head was the most painful but from a realistic perspective if you're planning on you know getting us ribs or whatever i'd say ribs uh, ribs were definitely the most painful for me other than my head like the spots just below your chin just certain spots really really hurt and you just gotta dive into it you gotta go into there knowing it's not gonna be easy but don't I don't want to try and turn you off of it. Get it done. Uh, how am I going to feel when I'm old and tattooed? I don't know. It's kind of like motivation to stay in shape and not, you know, let, let myself go. Make these and make my investment work, look as good as possible, right, on my body. So it's more motivation to just stay in shape and try and do the best I can. Keep the skin tight. But I mean, I'm going to get old and it's still going to be sweet. I'm still going to love it. And what do my parents think of them? Mom and dad, I love you. They have supported me and my choices since day one. And, uh, well, not, the, not my head, but <laughs> they have supported every other choice since day one. And I love them for it. Uh, you guys are amazing. And they're still supporting me now. I have to get the mother tattoo. I got father and my mom didn't like that. I didn't get mother yet. So I have to get that. But I think that's it. Yeah. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Really fun to make and talk to you guys about it. If you have literally any other questions or anything I missed, please write it in the comments and I will answer them. Share this with anybody who's thinking of getting a tattoo or wants to know about tattoos and you know, get some ideas and stuff. Hopefully it inspired some of you to get your first tattoo, second, third, who knows. Don't forget to hit that like and no, smash. Smash that like button guys and hit that subscribe and guys when I hit 2,000 subs I cannot wait to tell you the idea for the video I have so be sure to subscribe mm -hmm.